G'day and welcome back to Down the Shed with Byron. And today we're playing around with the VY Commodore project. Now I'm trying to get this thing back on the road and I'm just trying to do a few preventative maintenance uh, tasks before sending it over the pits. Now one of them is the lower control arms. Now they're common for the bushes flogging out. So I thought why not do a little video of how I replace them without a press. Tools for the job, pry bar, breaker bar, a few ratchets, um, some sockets, 13mm, 19mm, 24 and 30 uh, Deep 19 is handy. Um, some pliers, some, some side cutters and uh, multi grips. A decent gimpy and soft face hammer. A few spanners um, ranging from 19mm, so that offset there is pretty handy. Um, 7 8 or 22mm for the ball joints. Um, 15 16 or 24 mil for the front bush nuts, some consumables, uh, a bit of Loctite, WD-40 and that, Stanley knife and uh, paint marker, some other bits and pieces that make it a bit easier, a rattle gun, drill, um, a handful of small drill bits, electric ratchets, handy. Now to pull the bush um, through, I've got a, a bolt roughly 10 mil by 150 or six inch. You'll need something to fit the bush through. So that's a 45 slash 46 mil socket or yeah, something along those lines, just to help you pull the inner bush through, which you'll see in the video, a decent punch and um, decent chisel. And if you can find a few decent um, panel washers. Vehicle jacked up, secure, let's rip some wheels off and uh, we'll get into it. Alright, with the wheels ripped off now, one thing I like to do is just throw the tyres back under the car, just in case, at least you can still get a jack under there if something goes wrong. So let's just have a look at what we're doing. Um, First of all, we're changing out the front Z bar bush in the front here. Um, should be relatively easy to pull off. And then the other end of it, which is in here. Hopefully it right there. So that bush inside that control arm. And then that inner one, which is common for flogging out. What I'll start by doing is we'll give everything just a bit of lube just to get it uh, penetrating while we get into it. And with a paint marker, just a quick little um, mark, just so we know which way to throw it back on initially. But I do advise, we have to get a wheel alignment after this. Right now we're into uh, the nitty gritty of it. I'm gonna undo the tie rod ends because it just makes it easier to get socket and rattle gun into here or um, et cetera. So we'll remove that split pin, uh, crack the nut off and I'll show you how to undo this. Now that ended up being a bigger job than what it needed to be. But um, yeah, so what I've done, I just straightened it out, got enough through, cut the end off that was all twisted, got hold of the head of the split pin and just used the side cutters just to pull it out. 19 mil most of the time, just to crack this one off. Now, don't remove the nut completely, but what you can do now, depending if you've got the tooling or not, is um, you can use one of these ball joint separators, slides underneath, and just just side view so you can see what I'm talking about. You wind that down, pops it apart. Now, if you haven't got this, that's okay. You can get away with uh, giving that a decent bash on the side here with a hammer, and what that does in there, that's a taper, and that'll pop that joint out. There you go, that's uh, come out. Now you can remove that nut. So that's just there for the just in case you're uh, not, the, not the best on the hammer. 
we do. Put that to the side. And now we'll uh, move into cracking those bolts off. With that tie rod out of the way, now you can actually move the hub into a position where you can remove the ball joint nut. Now this is either 22 mil or 7 8 and if you can fit your ring end of the spanner on there initially to crack it. And we'll undo that now. Now what I like to do is take that nut completely off so you know um, it's, it's off. Then I'll put it back on just loosely, again, depending on how good you are with a hammer. Because what happens is if you crack the taper in there, that ball joint, and you haven't completely released that nut, it's going to end up spinning on you, end up being a drama. What I do now with a decent size punch um, or drift, I'll put it either just in here or on, on this side here, just on here. And we'll give that a decent hit with the hammer and that'll crack that as well. Now you can get ball joint separating tools, but I haven't got that. So we'll crack that off now. And just like that, with a couple of decent hits, you can uh, just, like I was saying, there's a taper in there and you can crack that ball joint off. Now we can take that nut off. With the ball joint sorted out now, we'll move on to the Z-bar um, nut, which goes into the control arm. Now this is a 30 mil socket or spanner. Put that on there. This will be tight. We'll back that off now. Now with that, backed off i'm just going to take that completely out there i'll move up to the inner bolt holds the control arm to the um, k frame of the car so that's a 19 mil socket so i'll try and get the socket or spanner on either side most of the time you can get a socket sorry about that just into there to undo that bolt we'll remove that now Now this bolt might be a little bit tight, so either just keep ratcheting it until it sort of makes its way out, or use a bit of a pry bar under there, and just, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, pry it out a bit. So from that inner bolt, we'll move around to the front now, and we'll just uh, start off by cracking this front nut, which is 24 mil or 15 sixteenths. Again, this will be tight. And a handy tool for this is a ratchet spanner. Now with this nut removed, We'll move on to uh, the 13 mil nuts that hold that mount in place. I've just put a mark to the side here as a bit of a reference. So we'll crack these off and uh, we'll pull that bush out of the way. All right, let's uh, see if she comes out. There you go. Push out. Now I'll go down to the control arm and we'll give this a bit of a wiggle. There we go, our ball joint's falling out. So yeah, it's a bit of a, you work it out, it's a bit of a juggling act here. So that Z bar goes, push it back forward, back down, and that's out. Hopefully, on camera, the ball joint comes out, there we go. Now we've got that front mount on the bench here, next to the new one. I'll just transition that uh, little white mark over for the front mount. We'll check our ball joint. So you just want nice, firm sort of movement there. 
if you can actually feel that flogging around, it's probably time to get some um, new ball joints. But the cheapest option is just to buy some brand new arms in that case. Now these bushes actually don't look too bad, but we're gonna replace them anyway. So what I'll start by doing is with this, um, that's the Z-bar bush. It's just take note of which side is, uh, you've got a large side where that nut goes into, and you've got the smaller side where the rod comes into. So that's the front and that's the rear. So you can label it if you want. What I do now um, is I use a small drill bit and we drill around the rubber and try and keep it as close as you can to the actual um, steel because you don't want to be going into the actual arm. Sorry about that, I accidentally had you on time lapse when I was uh, trying to bash that bush out. But basically, because you've taken enough of that rubber away, you can get the hammer and chisel and just knock it out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much ready to go. We'll just uh, give that a clean up with some emery paper. But just be careful when you are running the drill through there, you may score the inside. So small drill bit, take your time and cut a bit of that rubber away. Now this is the one that's uh, a little bit of a mission to get out. And again, I'll do the same thing where I'll drill out that rubber. Um, don't have to be too careful with this one because you've got a, um, you've got the outer sheave of that bush and you've got the inner, which is this section here. Um, and what you'll do, drill that out until you uh, collapse all that rubber in. We'll bash that out and then I'll show you what we'll do with that outer um, sleeve after. Now with most of that rubber all drilled out, I'll just give that a bash with a hammer and chisel and that should knock out that center section. Um, then we'll come to that outer casing. So now we've got that intersection removed, what you can do now is either get a hacksaw and cut a groove into the outer sheave or a little die grinder. The other option is just to bash it with a hammer and chisel to collapse it on one side, which is what I've done on the other one, and that was able to uh, pop it out. So it is a bit of effort to actually bust that out. But yeah, you can, um, yeah, as you can see, it's probably taken me about, with the videoing, 10 minutes to get that out. Now we'll clean that out with a um, bit of emery paper and then we'll put the new bushes in. Now with both of those cleaned out, um, I'll just grab some silicon grease. Uh, you can also get away with using a bit of red rubber grease, which is fine. Most of the time in the kits you buy, you get the assembly grease. So we'll lube them up. And because these are the nolothane bushes, they literally just push in by hand. Now with that done, just remember what side this is, this is the drivers, so that's front of the car, that's the side the nut comes in through, push that in. Okay, now to installing the inner bush. Now I'm just using a Petters um, inner bush kit, which is EP6500. I'll put that into the description. Now on the inside here, it's got a bit of a um, step, and in the bush you'll see that. Now there is a couple of ways of um, installing this bush. Now, if you don't have a vise, um, what I'm gonna do or demonstrate is a long bolt, which 
roughly oh, about 150 to 6 inches long um, with a socket or something along those lines of catching it at the end so you can push it in because what happens is it flexes on you as you're trying to push it in. So what I'll do, I'll just lube up the inside of this one and then we'll um, bang a bit on that bush. Now we're pushing it through this way for that lip to catch into there. So I'll just get the front of it. Now with that all lubed up, I'll just uh, hold it in place. I'm using the socket which is roughly 45 mil, so it slides over the end. So hopefully you can, I'll just show you, we'll push that in. So now it's jammed halfway in the socket. Get into position, your long bolt, put that in, an old panel washer, and that. And now what we'll do, we'll just wind that in. Now you just seen it just to get that uh, start of the bush in was a little bit of the tricky part. Now we're uh, pretty much at the point where we should be able to pull that bolt out. Now if you're doing it in the vise, similar scenario. Like I said, I've got this pressing plate that I made for something I had earlier. Now we'll just pull that socket off without pulling the bush back out. Uh oh, not gonna work. Okay, with the socket off or your spacer. Now you can also use, I'll show you something after, but now we should be able to push that pretty much through. Done. Who needs a press? <laughs> now again, with a bit more loop, we'll just uh, coat up the inside here. And then we'll put the crush tube through. Now this is initially a little bit tricky to get started. Slide that in now. Now our inner bush is done. So yeah, over time, changing wheel bearings and bits and pieces, I've saved a few of these, just to use for um, reassembling bits and pieces. So if you have got some old bearings, save them, they'll help you. All right, now it's time to put that control arm back into the car. Now, once you've got the lower control arm into position, I'll try and show you that bolt hole. You gotta try and line that up. Then we'll put the bolt back in. And put the nut on the other side and we'll just tighten that up. Not all the way, but just so it's firm. Now with that just nipped up for now, let's push this lower ball joint up. And I'll just tighten this up in uh, situ. Now, if this starts spinning on you, literally just get the jack underneath the control arm just to hold pressure on there. Now be careful as you're doing this up because you've got the ABS line in the way. Okay, with that tightened up now, we can move on to the Z bar. Put a bit of never seize on each end just to um, help inside these collars. So next time we have to do these bushes, makes it a bit easier. We're going to uh, start by threading it through the front of the K-frame just so we can position it and hopefully on video that slides in. Once that's through we can um, now put this nut on and washer. I'll put a bit of never seize on here as well and on the inside of the thread I'll just put a dab of um, medium strength Loctite. Now we'll wind that on and again we'll do this up so it's just firm but not tight to the front mount and I've got that little mark that I um, transitioned from the old mount over so now we can um, fit that back on 
slide that over, give that a wriggle into place, and that worked well. Now, we'll just put these uh, little nuts back on and we'll tighten them up. Although he's tightened up firm, um, put this nylon nut back on. And again, we'll just do this up so it's just firm, but not tight yet. Now we're onto the thyroid end. But just to recap, the lower control arm, uh, bolts and nut are both just nipped up. Same with the front one. We've tightened up that ball joint, so that's tight. Now we'll just put the thyroid end in. And I've got that lined up so the split pin will go straight through. We'll tighten this up. So I'll just tighten it up firm and then double check where the hole is for the um, split pin to go through and we'll adjust it. Almost there. That should be close enough of what I can see. Now I always try if I can, put the split pin through from the front and then push that through, fold that back, just fold it over itself and then f wrap that one back around. So what I've done now is I've just rolled the car back and forth a couple times and wriggled the steering wheel just to settle down that front suspension. Um, double checked wheel nuts Put the hubcaps back on and we'll just run it up on the car ramps now so we can get under it. Now I do this just because it's good practice to do up all suspension while it's in a neutral position as the car's sitting on the road. So yeah, it's just good practice. So we might as well start with this front nut, make sure it's tight to that bush. Then we'll move on to the inner bolt, make sure that's tight and that Z bar and make sure that nut's done up tight as well. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you out if you are tackling this job. Um, sorry, it went on for a little bit. I was trying to be as detailed as possible. Uh, forgot to mention, a set of car ramps are handy as well. Otherwise, if there's any other tips we can give others, throw it in the comments. Alrighto, take it easy and see you when I'm looking at you.